Hey everyone, this video is going to be doing a little bit of work on a new toy that I picked up a few weeks ago. It's a 1923 Ford Model T hot rod, also known as a bucket T or T bucket. Um, basically, from what I can gather, this is a, there was a company, it's a little bit of an older build, um, and there was a company called Total Performance, and they made basically bucket T hot rod kits. And I believe this is either one of them or utilized a lot of those pieces. Um, since it's pretty new to the, or it is new to the channel, uh, I'll do a quick overview before actually getting into the part that I need to do work on. This is a modeled after a Ford Model T. Um, it has probably no parts that are 100 years old, except for maybe this radiator cap, although this may be a replica also. It has a Chevy 350 that was stroked, so it's a 383 stroker motor. Of course, it has the high-rise intake and the dual four-barrel carburetors and then the tunnel ram intake. It's followed by a turbo 350 automatic transmission and a Dana 60 rear end. It has these uh, cool headers that are just open headers and really loud and obnoxious. Electric water pump, which is kind of cool. Chrome alternator. Uh, it has a lot of the things that make it shiny on it. It also has an MSD ignition system, so it tends to start and run pretty well. The interior is pretty basic. It has a tiny little steering wheel. The brake is on your left foot and the gas is on your right foot, so kind of like a go-kart. This is the shifter. There is no reverse lockout on this, and I'm always nervous that I'm going to bump it with my knee and throw it into reverse or park when I'm driving. So I found this uh, B&M shifter with a reverse lockout that I'm planning on swapping out at some point, but that's not super high priority at this point. And just to give the rest of the tour, I got a fun license plate for it. It's got some more chrome and, and painted bits underneath. It has these huge rear tires and it's overall just nothing practical about it. It gets about eight miles to the gallon. It's loud. It doesn't steer well. It doesn't brake well. It's really fast and it's a whole lot of fun to drive. That said, I haven't driven it that much and even when I have been driving it, I've been chasing uh, what I think is commonly referred to as a death wobble. Basically what that means is there's an uncontrollable wobble due to some sort of looseness in the front end steering components or suspension components that makes it very difficult, if not impossible, to control. So I have a quick video of it doing that, or of it so I have a quick video clip of it doing that that will illustrate what's happening pretty clearly. I think these parts on this front end are not, there's a little bit of movement in this kingpin bushing. I don't think it's enough at this point for me to chase it down and put in new bu bushings. That seems to be a, a bit of a pain. I believe these are 1937 to 1942 Ford style spindles. And from what I was reading, the bushings have to be pressed in and then they have to be reamed after they've been installed to be able to have as tight of a fit as possible. So I don't think I'm gonna go quite that far at this point. There's some things like this steering arm has a stack of washers that don't quite fit that could have some slop in it, but I don't think that's where my slop is coming from. Um, also, another point where you could get death wobble is the wheel bearings. If the wheel bearings are bad or the torque is not correct on the spindle nut, then the wheel could be wobbling around on the spindle and that could cause problems. But I think also on other cars, it could be because of worn suspension bushings and the control arms and that sort of thing. But I think I found, if I wiggle this, you can kind of see this side of the axle is moving back and forth. And what I noticed is that 
this is the heim joint that originally went back here to hold the back side of this radius arm, uh, I think also known as a, a wishbone, um, also known as a hairpin. Um, but basically, that locates this side of the front axle. And by locate, I mean positions it and holds it in place. Obviously, it can flex with the suspension and the steering still has its movement, but it shouldn't move front to back and also it shouldn't move side to side. Side to side locating is done by the leaf spring and the front to back locating is done by this radius arm. As you move forward, the axle is going to want to naturally slide underneath the car and go backwards and this basically just holds it from going backwards. So this is, it's obviously bent, so at some point it looks like there was some kind of interference in the front of the car that uh, maybe booped this whole assembly and bent the hind joint on both sides. But I'm guessing that in that event also the threads got stripped in the radius arm because when the death wobble on this got really bad, it was because this had completely pulled out of the end of the radius arm. So these threads in here are stripped and effectively this radius arm could be repaired, but because it's chrome, um, I just opted to get a new one. The new one that I got is from Speedway Motors and it is a a special run to have the same style as the old total performance radius arms which is why i think this is a total performance kit with the exception and i think these are chevy style radius arms even though they're on a ford setup this is kind of a kind of a mashup of a bunch of different parts true to hot rod style it kind of takes the the best things of the era and puts them all together to, to make something that works. But the nice thing about this reproduction, or I mean, it's all kind of reproduction, but this, this new version of this radius arm is it accepts 5 8 hardware versus the old one that was only half inch hardware. This is the half inch Heim joint that bent, and this is going to be the new 5 8 it's quite a bit beefier and hopefully should not bend like that and then also I think this is about a half inch longer than my original one so I should be able to thread all of the hardware in a little bit further so I have a little bit more bite I also got new 5 inch 5 eighths inch hardware I was gonna see if I could get away with getting an adapter and using this half half inch these half inch clevis pins on the front with an adapter to feed them into the new 5 8 radius arm but I just decided that was a little too cringy and for the 50 bucks of new chrome clevis pins it was just worth it to get the right part so that should be a relatively easy fix but the axle had was cracked um, and the previous owner decided to cut it in half and sleeve it and then re-weld it and just have this burn mark on the in the middle which i think i do have a solution for but the problem is is this weld doesn't seem to be holding there is i don't know if i can do it with my hand but it it is flexing in this this spot so this weld is very definitely failing so that said i need to pull the entire front end apart cut that in the middle again or somehow separate the two halves and then re-sleeve it re-weld it back together reassemble it i will be reassembling it with my new radius arms and i also there's another thing called ackerman angle for the steering arms. That will be another video. First things first 
is to pull this other wheel off, pull all this other hardware off, and get this axle off of the car. Now the axle is pretty much disconnected from the car. This is the passenger side radius arm. As far as I know, it's, it's in good enough condition to still work. I don't think those threads are stripped out on the back, but I did get a new pair of them to replace them both at the same time. Since this heim joint is very clearly bent in the same way that the other side was, and it's also still a half inch hardware unit, I just figure it's better to replace them both. Also, I think these are probably in backwards or either too long because they are interfering with the axle. To some degree, for the most part, the axle sits between them when it's all put together, but I'm gonna flip these around just so they're not hitting the axle. And then also I did get a chrome leaf spring because while I'm in here and I have everything apart, this one's a little bit rusty and who doesn't like more chrome so i will be getting that in soon and i'll be able to swap this out as well but i think the only thing left holding it on is that it's just sitting on this stud right here but pretty much everything else came apart pretty nicely i'm not sure i was under the impression that this was a bolt going through there but it looks like it's some kind of stud and it also looks like it has a shoulder so i might need to investigate that a little bit more in regards to how that heim joint is supposed to attach to here i'm not totally thrilled with this part of the steering arm anyway and that's because as you can see again whoever built it had to shave out a little bit of this spindle and put this nut on the end so it's it's hard to tell if that's how it's supposed to be or if that's just kind of cobbled together to work i do need to be aware that i need to have the brake caliper mount spaced accordingly so that may limit my options but i may order a new one of these at some point also look at these funny little brake pads they're just little round i don't even know if they do very much or if they're just there for show but yeah Next thing is to pull this off and get it in a position where I can work with it. So the axle is completely off and ready to start working on. 
I probably will need to remove that center link at some point, but I just haven't yet. Uh, and the next step is to s clean this up and separate these two halves again. And first of all, find out what's inside. And second of all, decide if that's good enough or if I'm going to need to find something else to sleeve it with. But uh, the important thing is to be able to clean this up to see what I'm working with. But also I need to be through the chrome in order to be able to weld this steel axle. So I picked up this cool tool. It's basically for sanding things that are round and it uses, you can get uh, different grits obviously of sandpaper um, and you can get a skinny one or a wider one and it takes these I think 30 inch sanding belts and basically you can it will conform as you push on it it will it's spring loaded so it keeps the tension and it conforms to the shape of the not flat thing that you're trying to sand so i'm going to give this a try i think it will be a lot easier and make a lot better result than trying to use like a flap disc or a cutoff wheel or something although i may need to use a cutoff wheel or some kind of grinding wheel to actually grind through the weld but we'll see how sanding actually how sanding goes first before uh So having flipped the axle over, uh, the underside looks worse than the top side did. It is showing a little bit of rust, which uh, I'm going to call a good thing because I know it's mild steel under here, so I'll be able to weld it nicely. Um, when I'm done, I'll throw a coat of paint on it to keep it from corroding, but you can see the difference. Um, this is sanded, this is not sanded. Uh, the weld is, definitely looks cracked all the way around. Um, I don't know how much of a pain it's going to be to actually split these two pieces, but uh, first things first is just getting it cleaned up. Alright, at this point I'm finished sanding for now. Here's my sander. I took the center link off just to be able to not have it in the way and I picked up this little bandsaw a little while ago and it cuts really nicely through tube and this is going to be a perfect use case for it. So I got the axle mounted up in there and now it's just the really uncomfortable part of cutting it in half right at the weld. I don't know what it's sleeved with. The guy had said, the previous owner said he sleeved it with something solid. Uh, hopefully it's not actually solid all the way through, but I guess we will find out. And then we can go from there. in half it's not solid but I'm not quite sure if this first layer is the sleeve 
or just the second layer is the sleeve. I think this is, if this is like other axles, then it is quarter inch wall. So this first part looks about to be a quarter of an inch. Um, well, maybe the whole thing. And it's just sleeved with this pipe or this, this tube. So I guess I'm going to, uh, I don't know. I think I might end the video here for this video and I'm gonna have to figure out what I need to do and what I need to get. Um, okay, well, I think that's gonna be it for right now. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you liked this video and you would like to see part two, which will be hopefully putting the axle back together and then reinstalling it back on the car. Comment below with any suggestions or information or anything else that you may want to say. It would be hugely appreciated. And I think that's it. Thanks again for watching. And like I said, Stay tuned for part two. Um, also, another point where you could get wheel wah wheel wah wah wah.